Dude, you know what's crazy? I was looking at the comments in one of our last shoe reviews, and someone is repeatedly making fun of me for wearing a puffy jacket during our reviews. And I just have to point out that I come from the old school where if it's cold outside, we do not turn the heat on in this house. We go directly to more layers first. So, yep. Finn comes from a world where he spends three years worth of heating bills on one Patagonia puffy jacket. <laughs> Just had to clear that up. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Conversational Pace episode. We've got a fun one today. A very uh, hotly requested shoe. We've put it through. I think, Finn, is this, I think this might be a company record for most testing miles. Absolutely. I I was telling you, what I have tracked on Strava, I I put 194.7 miles on this shoe, and it definitely looks like I did. But I actually think I probably put closer to 230 or 240, and I just I just missed a couple documentations um, in a few runs. But yeah, a lot of a lot of running in this shoe for me. The shoe that we're talking about is the Solomon Genesis, not to be confused with the S Lab Genesis. The S Lab Genesis has been around for quite a few years, but this is the regular Solomon Genesis. So I don't know the budget Genesis. I always thought it was interesting that they had basically like an upgraded model, but then there was no base model. Usually there's like an, the S lab is the upgraded version of something. It was like, if there was like only an iPhone pro max, but then there was just no regular one. That's what Solomon had been doing for the last few years. And then they finally released the Solomon Genesis and we've run in it a lot. Uh, Finn, I hope your back is feeling okay from carrying the team. (laughs) I got an, I got an 80 miles on this shoe, but I did log a lot of vert. Um, so combined, we're like well over 300 for a pair of shoes. So I'm pretty sure that's a conversational pace record dethroning the <laughs> Speedland GS Tam, yeah. which was probably closer to 250. But um, yeah, before we get going, I just want to let everyone know that these shoes were provided to us by Solomon and Running Warehouse, but we're under no financial obligation to say whether we like a product or not because we want to keep these reviews authentic and beneficial for you. No one will get to preview or watch this footage before it gets published to YouTube. Solomon Genesis retails for 150 US dollars. The weight of my pair was 10.2 ounces or 290 grams. And that was in a US men's size 10. Stack heights are 26 millimeters in the forefoot and 34 millimeters in the heel, making for an eight millimeter drop. The upper retains the matrix material, which was perhaps the biggest shock when I saw the shoe Mm. at the running event. Um, This is, I think, at least in the US, this is the cheapest shoe that you can get with a matrix upper, which I feel like we've never had any complaints about the matrix upper. We'll dive into it a little bit more. But uh, so it retains the matrix material upper. There's a little bit of uh, protective overlay around the toe cap that goes into one plastic overlay around the bottom of the upper and towards the heel. We've got Solomon's more classic quick lace system, which goes into their bigger lace garage, which in my opinion, still an upgrade medium padded tongue that's gusseted. Um, it's like, I don't know. I kind of like this tongue. It's, it's got a little bit more padding than some of the S lab tongues, but, uh, like very linear amount of foam all the way throughout. Yep. Which, yeah, I've actually never, I don't think I've ever really had any lace bite problems in Solomon shoes. So they've always done a pretty good job with their lacing systems. One of the biggest differences I would say between this shoe and the S lab Genesis is that this does not have the matrix knit ankle collar. Instead, we've got like a very classic uh, ankle collar heel cup got a little bit of rigidity to it and kind of just a medium amount of foam. It's a very regular heel cup. So that was pretty nifty. The midsole is Solomon's energy foam, which is kind of their just proprietary basic EVA that they have in nearly every single one of their trail shoes. Uh, They're just tuned a little bit differently. Kind of like when, when you hear like new balance fuel cell foam, not all fuel cell foams are created equal, yeah. just like not all Solomon energy foams are created equal. We'll, we'll dive into some comparisons with some of the other Solomon trail shoes, but all this is, is one big old slab of energy foam. Similar to the S lab Genesis, we still have a plastic tab along 
kind of like the midfoot going into the heel. It's definitely a plastic on the lateral side, but then it's just foam on the medial side. The S lab version has two plastic ones, except it's not a full hard plastic. It's got a little bit of flexibility to it. And that's supposed to help with stability around the ankle when you're running on technical terrain. I'm, I'm including those pieces with this midsole segment because the medial side is just a continuation of the midsole. The outsole is Solomon's, you know, classic in-house contra grip. It's uh, pretty sticky. It's on the softer side. So from an abrasion standpoint, it wears down a little bit quicker than like say fiber mega grip, but uh, they made up for it by actually adding like some pretty chonky lugs here. So we're looking four and a half millimeter lugs, which is the same as the S lab, but there's actually a bit more rubber than the S lab version. Finn. So I know we talked about the testing mileage a little bit, but I would love for you to expand a little bit more on your 230 miles, because I know you did more than just training in this shoe. <laughs> yeah. And I should say, cause we also, we caught, we caught some flack on social media for calling this the budget version of the Genesis. And I just want to clarify too, that budget is a very endearing term. I, I use that term in a very endearing way. I love the back in my day type price point of 150. So truly an endearing perspective from us, but yeah, uh, the majority of my miles came in three distinct races. So I'm getting ready for the Cocodona 250 in 19 days from now, which is crazy to think about. And in the lead up, I did the Red Mountain 50K down in St. George, Utah, the Antelope Island 50 miler outside of Syracuse, Utah, and then just got back a couple days ago from the Desert Rats 100K outside of Fruta, Colorado. All three of these races were somewhat similar in terms of terrain and conditions, fairly hot light to slightly moderate technicality, which, you know, you and I were talking offline is not quite the use case for this shoe. Although I do believe this is like a quiver of one type shoe. This really would be, have been better used like in like a summer mountain type race did not get into that type of uh, environment, but yeah, it was fun to work hard in this shoe run relatively fast compared to how I've been training for Cocodona and yeah, just putting it through the test of like anywhere from, I mean, Red Mountain was four hours time on feet. Antelope was seven hours time on feet. Desert Rats was a little over 11 hours time on feet. So did 15, 22 hours of racing in the shoe, which was pretty cool. So yeah, uh, this was one of the more like thoroughly and widely used shoes that I've tested at conversational pace. Yeah, that is super impressive. The other impressive thing too, is that like you still ended up wearing it for desert rats, even though it already had two races on it. And did you, and you wore it for the entire race too at desert rats for the hundred K I, I did. And I, and I think this shoot like the, I don't know how to, I don't know if I have like the right vocabulary to describe this phenomenon, but I almost feel like the shoe comes out of the box in the same feel that you would experience at like 150 to 200 miles anyways, like the ratios for the upper in terms of breathability and durability, the ratios around like cushioning protection and ground feel like it feels like it had the same feeling of like already being 150 miles into it, which I, in some circumstances is a good thing in my opinion. And so, yeah, like the, experience I had at Red Mountain with this shoe from a performance standpoint was like almost the same experience from like a foam standpoint, outsole performance standpoint, midsole performance. Like it all, it all worked for me, locked down everything. Yeah. I mean, that's really impressive. And I think that's just kind of like a testament to how the shoes definitely kind of a workhorse. Um, you know, you had said that it, it felt kind of like almost broken in out of the box, uh, right out of the box. I think a lot of that comes down to the way that like Solomon put the pieces of the shoe together, yeah. which um, I definitely have some different, like slightly different opinions on it, but I understand exactly where you're coming from. You know, like that's one of the things like talking more specifically about the upper, um, I yeah. guess one thing too, like fit lengthwise, I feel like the shoe runs very true to size. Um, yes. Like that was no issue at all, but uh, matrix upper, the, because it's such a thin material and it doesn't change that much, there's no breaking in for it to do. Like it's mm. what you get out of the box is what you're going to get like 600 miles later because it doesn't stretch out. 
um, it doesn't hold moisture. It's very thin. It's very lightweight. Like at, at, in my opinion on the trails, as of right now, it is the best upper material. Like, yeah, it's, it's the best upper you can put on a trail shoe right now. I, I would, I would also, and I agree hundred percent with that. I would just add that I think, cause what they did in my experience is they created a pretty like naturally relaxed fit from the heel through the midfoot. And I think that's really, that's a good thing to do if you're going to accommodate performance for the long term, like, like the long term mm-hmm. break into the shoe. If you're already creating a relaxed feel through the heel cup, through the midfoot, that's good for like the long term upper wear of the shoe. And I think part of that is due to Solomon going for the classic heel cup and dropping the knit, you know, like, like we've said before, like when we did the, the Pulsar Trail Pro 2 last year, the shoe was just kind of hard to get on. Um, because of the uh, because of the knit upper or the knit ankle collar, the S Lab Ultra V3, another one, kind just kind of hard to get on. And once it's on, it's fine, but like it, it almost degrades from like it almost stresses you out a little bit when you put the shoe on. And this is one of those shoes where like you can slip it on pretty easily, and uh, you can actually make it pretty loose around the ankle opening, which for some ultra scenarios is uh, it's just nice to have that. And it's, it's crazy to me too, how much of a role like quick laces and boa dials have in that comfort security balance of an upper versus just like normal lacing. Like, like to me, one of the biggest reasons why this upper has stayed comfortable for me for so long is that I can always tinker with that. Like you can't really do that with a lacing, like a traditional lacing system. And I love like at desert rats, I had a slightly different lockdown then i did it antelope then i did it red mountain i was also kind of adapting to the upper in that way too as things did like minutely break in so that was i really appreciated that yeah for sure and like i gosh i wish i had a soundboard because i would make like a noise for like brett's mild like lukewarm take of the episode (laughs) give me solomon's quick lacing system over boa dials every day of the week I'm almost there because I think the last time we talked, we were reviewing the uh, La Sportiva Boa Jackal, and I was telling you that I, I think that like towards the forefoot, I still like the Boa dials for that reason. There's just slightly better lockdown towards the forefoot of the midfoot, and if that even made sense right there. Um, whereas like I feel like I get just secure lockdown only towards like the center of the midfoot with uh, quick laces. Oh, you, you know right? what? You know what? I don't think I've seen Boa dials on a Matrix upper. You know that like one like WWE meme where he's like, and then like the final one would be like Matrix, <laughs> Matrix upper with boa dials. He's like, <laughs> maybe that's like the end game for uh oh my. for over the top trail shoot. Why numbers. why why is it? What's your what's your th- what's your hypothesis there? Oh, so the reason why I don't think boa dials are like really ever going to be necessary on a matrix upper is because this just has no stretch at all to it anyways. Like I, I don't know about you, but like I didn't ever have to do any tinkering with the laces ever. Once I put them on and started running, like it stayed exactly as it was. And because the matrix upper has no stretch, I don't need to make it very tight, which means climbing is comfortable, but then because it doesn't have any stretch, I have amazing lockdown on all descending anyways. So then it's just like, I didn't need to touch it. So then why would I spend extra money on something when I could just yeah. have this? But with that being said, no budget, S lab, Genesis, uh, V2 Boa dials. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Um, so this is an awesome upper. I didn't love the midsole. Are you going to be writing home about this midsole? I no. Like, <laughs> so that was the thing. So I went on one run. The very, very first run out of the box, I was like, damn, it's like kind of firm. I bet Finn's going to love this because <laughs> I don't. And and that's just, I mean, that's mostly because of like where we train. Like even your more mellow trails out of Salt Lake yeah. are, would be technical trails in, in Ashland. Like I am on like the like true groomers and there's still a ton of vert, but the trails are pretty hard packed and like, I, I much prefer a softer, bouncier, more inspiring kind of feeling foam. And like, I just didn't get that from this shoe. 
I did take it on some of the most technical trails in Ashland and the more rocks, the steeper, the more this midsole foam makes sense. So I feel like if I lived in just an area where I was running mountains instead of hills, yeah, I would probably like be, this shoe would be like one of my go-tos all the time. But for most of what I'm doing, which is like running on non-technical trails, I want a little bit more fun feeling foam with a little more bounce. Cause I feel like this one, it really absorbs a lot of energy. Like it's almost kind of dead feeling, which is great for rocks and more technical terrain. Mm. It's also great from a durability standpoint because it's just a denser material. It just changes less. Like, you know, I've got 80 miles and it was about 13 hours of running. And I, I climbed 17,000 feet in 80 miles in the shoe. And there's a little bit of creasing on some of the midsole foam, but other than that, it feels the same as like mm. right out of the box. So kind of like you had said before, like you're, you know, do it all sort of shoe. If, if you just yeah. are like, I don't want to mess with something like, give me a, give me like your, you know, Toyota Corolla, which like, I can't believe the Toyota Corolla has a matrix upper. Cause that <laughs> would be like, that's like putting a four banger in a Lambo. Um, <laughs> Cause this is like the sleekest, like most amazing upper throw. I would absolutely throw this on any like mega expensive racing shoe, but then we've just got like foam. What do you think? I got to throw a question back to you about the, I know we're talking the ride right now, but I got to throw a question back to the upper Dyneema or matrix and why matrix. I think both are overbuilt for trail running. Like I I've never seen. I don't think I've ever seen a picture of anyone with like a blown out matrix upper. And I've definitely never seen a picture of any of like, like a blown out Norda upper that just leads me to believe then that it's like slightly overbuilt. And then if both of them are indestructible, I'm picking the one that's more breathable and drains a little bit better. Um, and again, that's because like, I don't, I'm not scraping them or scuffing them on rocks. I'm not going through scree fields. Um, I'm not, I'm not Anton, you know, he might have different feelings, but I, I like matrix more than Dyneema for all the use cases, especially I also live in a pretty warm area. Yeah. Um, what about you? Agreed. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's one of the best ratios out there on the market for like durability to breathability. Usually there's like a pretty, well, at least in the shoes that I've used in the past, there's been a pretty big compromise in, in that regard. And like, I'm not going to say it's like a one-to-one -one thing, but like pretty, pretty damn good ratio there. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I was racing in the desert in fairly significant heat and felt like it, you know, the breathability factor was great. So, um, that was one thing that I got to kind of test in this process, which was nice. Another part of the shoe that's, I think is fantastic is this outsole. I mean, it's the same depth lugs, same lug pattern as the S lab. Genesis one that like that, that the S lab Genesis has won so many races across a very wide, uh, you know, variety of terrains. So it's very tested. The only difference is that this one is just a little bit beefier across the middle, which helps out with the just underfoot protection. I felt like rock protection was great in the shoe, even though it has no rock plate. I don't think it needed one. What do you think? I don't think it needed one either. I mean, I think you could even argue that like the lugs here help like go a long way towards helping with protection underfoot. So I thought oh, yeah, it was fine. for sure. And we were talking like you had mentioned this too. Um, it sheds like mud and snow pretty, pretty well, well, which that was surprising because these lugs are pretty tight. Yeah. They're, they're pretty close together, but, um, I never had any issues with it getting caked up or anything like that. Neither did I. So, yeah, I mean, I think the only, the only like slight knock that I would give to Contagrip is that uh, I, I notice it wears down a little bit quicker than some other harder rubber compounds, but they added so much of it. I don't think for this shoe in particular, I, I'm, I don't think I'm going to notice anything. Yeah. I think my only regret testing this shoe is I didn't take it out a lot in technical terrain and in the, this Contra Grip is advertised as an all terrain rubber. It's like, four wheel drive. Right. That's and, great. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I really can't speak to it, but I, I imagine it, it does work. 
Totally. So, um, I mean, I don't really need to ask you if you would race in the shoe because you did. Um, I guess I would you out of context too? I raced in like where it wasn't even made for, and it was great. Would you? Yeah, and like any regrets? Like, was it? It was great. Would you do it again? Dude, no ragrets with an A. Yeah, just full send. Full send. <laughs> full send with the Jenny. Okay. Yeah, I mean, love I think, it. Like, I think the biggest findings for me, and I mean, yeah, the Solomon marketing team's probably going to love this, and I, I swear I'm not in cahoots with them. I think that this is a surface and conditions agnostic shoe. I think it finds pretty amazing middle ground across like fit, ride, underfoot performance. There's a lot of like, I think they, in a lot of ways, they perfectly tuned the trade-offs. Like we talked about the trade-offs in the upper with breathability, durability. Um, you know, with the midsole for me, I really liked sort of the nexus of the cushion protection ground feel. That was great. I feel like they just tweaked those trade-offs perfectly. And that's why it worked for me theoretically out of context at these like flatter, more runnable races. It was great. Yeah. This is a very well-balanced shoe, which kind of goes into the next segment that we were... I was building these notes out like right before we hit record and I kept adding to it because Solomon's mid range trail shoe lineup is an absolute mess right now. Yeah. So what's going on? I, they have, they have, way, <laughs> they have way too many, like there's so many shoes. So I originally had written like, how does this compare to the S lab Genesis? You know, that's what people want to know. Like is the S lab Genesis $50 better than this shoe? So the S Lab Genesis is about a half ounce lighter, and that's mostly due to having a slightly lower density midsole and a slightly more open lug pattern. So there's a little bit less rubber underfoot on the S Lab Genesis. You save a little weight there, a little bit uh, lighter weight midsole foam because, and that's one of the other big differences, the S Lab Genesis is a little bit softer and a little bit bouncier. The trade away though is like, you sacrifice a little bit of just overall durability. So the regular Genesis is going to last a little longer, but it's just a little bit firmer and maybe slightly less inspiring feeling. The S lab Genesis also gets the full knit ankle collar, which, um, you know, according to Solomon, that's going to be more stable. It's going to lock you in better. You also get that slight gator type, uh, debris protection. The other difference between this and the S lab Genesis is under the midfoot and under the forefoot. The regular Genesis is five millimeters wider. And while I haven't run extensively in the S lab Genesis, I have tried it on in both sizes and compared. And while yes, this is five millimeters, the regular Genesis is five millimeters wider at the base. I don't feel like the shoe is actually any wider where your foot is. I think the shoe is just wider at the base, which enhances the stability, but I don't yes. think the shoe's actually any wider than the S lab Genesis. So if you were looking for like, oh, I want that Genesis, but I want a wider feel. I don't think this is actually that shoe. Um, it's just a, a little bit more stable underfoot. So, you know, all those differences. And then the biggest difference of all is $50. Uh, the S lab Genesis is 200 bucks. This is 150. So I think it really comes down to whether that the difference in ride is worth $50 to you. Yeah, that dollar per mile ratio plus the factor in durability. I mean, the, uh, the upper is not going to be the first thing to go on this shoe. Neither is the outsole. I mean, I think Neither it's really, I think it's the midsole is the first yeah. thing that goes because it's just at the end of the day, it is still just regular EVA. Like that has a shelf life for sure. Yeah. So if um, you can adapt that midsole change over time, it could last you a long time. Yeah. Which like, I had no problems. Like I could go out and run every day in this, but one of the reasons why I run is like, I, I like running, but I also like running in products that is fun to run in and for Ashland and like West coast trails, like this just wasn't that fun to me. Um, but like, if I take that, if I take like the emotional aspect out of it, this totally works every single day of the week. But then we have the Solomon Thundercross. It's $140. It's supposed to be meant for more burlier terrain. It was like a more cushioned speed cross. I, don't, I can't think of a single scenario where I'm now pulling the Thunder Cross instead of this Genesis. I like this Genesis more. Yeah. You know, you, you talk about all this product line chaos and confusion, and it makes me nervous because at some point something's got to give, right? Something's going to get axed. And yeah. I get very concerned in these circumstances because at one point in time, something similar was happening at Ultra where they took out the greatest trail shoe of all time, the Ultra Men's Duo 1.5. 
And I worry that something similar could happen to our Genesis here. So for all our preppers out there that follow conversational pace, buy this up en masse. Well, I think it's the other way around. I think the Genesis is here to stay, but I think like shoes that are on the chopping block are the Solomon Thundercross, the Solomon, the sense ride. That's 140. I don't know when I'm ever going to buy a ride over this Genesis. The other one is the Ultra Glide 2. It is softer, but I like the fit and the matrix upper of this better. Those are both 150. I think that like also like again, edge to the Genesis. The other one that I really went back and forth is was the S Lab Ultra V3. So that one's 190. It's $40 more. It has that polyurethane insert in the yeah. midsole, which I really liked the feel of. It has the sense of film rock plate, keeps the matrix upper, but it does go knit. And like, I was just trying, I just tried on my pair because I kept my S lab ultras. And for me, the ride and the fit of the S lab ultra, I like $40 more than this one. What's the, what's the question to the audience? Which, which, what should we ask the audience here? I mean, my question is just like, why does Solomon have so many shoes in the same exact category? Like we didn't even go outside of, you know, like out, out, we didn't even go out of the brand. Like if, if you're running, if you are a professional trail runner for Solomon, what do you have in your shoe quiver? I can only imagine like this must be confusing for their athletes that run for Solomon too. Cause it's like, what am I supposed to be running in? Like, I know it's, yeah, I don't know. I think it's kind of a mess. I, I wouldn't be surprised if like 2025, we see a handful of these shoes disappear. What else? What, uh, comparisons to other brands, maybe like oh, okay. I, I, I was comparing yeah, you go, it to you other, go first. <laughs> yeah. I was comparing it to some other like allegedly do it all shoes. So like, you know, we talked about the normal Serac allegedly a do it all shoe. I think unless you've got like, feet of steel it's not really do it all but they brand it that way uh genesis is way softer more cushioned underfoot serac has more ground feel other one maybe brooks catamount um but brooks is more like a sub ultra sh the catamount's more like a 50k and below shoe i'd say faster and it's it's more expensive the catamount's 180 and more expensive right? yeah and it's got that propulsion plate firmer in the midsole um i would take genesis for longer distances so those are just a few that i threw out there yeah, I mean, a shoe that I think actually competes with this really well, uh, which we are supposed to be getting, um, the Nike Pegasus Trail. So That's a really good one. Yeah, I think the Nike Pegasus Trail is going to line up very closely with this. You know, the big difference is like you're going to get Matrix on here versus like Nike's own engineered mesh upper. But like what I already know I like more is I like React Foam more than Solomon's Energy Foam. So I'm going to get that. You know, I think another one, like the Saucony Peregrine is another one that's like kind of firmer, got yep. some bounce to it, medium weight, pretty beefy outsole. I think that one's 130. This is 150. Um, but again, you get the matrix upper. So from a value standpoint, it's hard not to recommend the shoe. Like even though I didn't love the midsole feel that much, this is a great value shoe because it's it's pretty indestructible, you know, and all it's going to take some time for this midsole to wear out outsole upper. It's solid. I mean, what do you think value standpoint? 150? Amazing. But I also thought you made, you made a really good point earlier about how just like our home training environments impact our relationships with the shoes. Like I would be so curious to know how I would have experienced this shoe in Ashland and you in Salt Lake city, you know, vice versa. And just how often we should call that out in future reviews. Cause the, like, where the, sh where the shoe is built for is so important. Like it's part of why I kind of appreciate so, uh, like Speedlands, like SL, you know, PDX or SL, SVTs, you know, like really mm -hmm. designated, like this is where the shoe was born out of. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, totally. I think my opinions for the midsole are totally different if I'm over in Salt Lake or in a place with more mountainous terrain, for sure. Yeah. Any any final, final words or thoughts about, about this shoe, Jim? I'm just stoked that, Solomon is accommodating more of an American style trail runner in their last two to three years of trail shoe expansion, uh, slightly less performance oriented stuff. I think it's yeah. great. Like I love the ultra glide as well. I just generally like their move towards like a more accommodating upper experience. So yeah, good things. Um, they have some sorting out to do. Obviously it sounds like just based on all the sub 
names you rattled off in this episode, but uh, I hope this Genesis stays. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think this is a solid shoe to their lineup and I think it's going to replace a few of shoes that they already, you know, have, uh, and that's okay. You know, not, not every shoe model is meant to last forever. Yeah. If, if any of what we said seemed uh, like it was enough to get you to want to try this shoe and your local run specialty shop does not have it, feel free to use our link below uh, to give this shoe a try from our friends at Running Warehouse. Your purchase helps uh, support the channel, allows us to do more reviews like this. 19 days to Cocodona. What's your training looking like for the next little bit? Are you are you in taper mode or not quite? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit of like uh, specificity for that first 37 mile section to Crown King, which is just this one long exposed climb. So I'll probably do a bunch of grandeur peak hiking with a full pack we have to carry five liters in that session five liters oh, of yeah. water that was a question i had for the audience was do you want to see a conversational pace episode of the gear that finn is planning on using at cocodona yeah let's do it it'll be great then, we should just do it and then like counter question if we do that episode we will do a post cocodona how yes. how correct were you on your gear decisions and like 100%. what changed i think that would be really fascinating because yeah i mean if it passes the cocodona test it's good enough for me um, and I think, I think this shoe will be in the rotate. I think there's going to be probably six, I, I won't spoil, but this will be probably one of five or six shoes that I bring down with me. For I mean, time. how could you not? Yeah. It clearly is clearly can work for you. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. We're going to go, uh, run some Hills, some mountains. We've got some, <laughs> we've got some fun shoes on deck right now. And, uh, yeah, Finn, the, the FedEx man is going to be dropping off some Christmas presents for you in the next few weeks as well. So, Can we t is the is the Mount Blanc next? Is the Mount Blanc Carbon the next one for Ultra, Ultra Mont Blanc Carbon yeah. is the next one. Um, that's gonna be next up for review. But um, yeah, we'll see everyone in the next conversational pace episode. <laughs>